What's up everyone? Kaishi no Kami here with... Kralika Kane! Hi! And we are going to talk about Don Brothers episodes 4 and 5. And we're actually later than what you anticipated on Twitter. Because Twitter you posted, we should have this out by... We should be recording by Thursday to have this out. For episode 4. But then we just we got together with Silver Quill and watched Revice instead. So therefore, it evens out. But anyway, Don Brothers Episode 4 is basically Momotaro Momo joins with uh, Pink's business company, or company, and they go out to help this restaurant owner be a better chef. Yeah, because he's with Suyoshi Kijino, or Kiji brother. Yeah, Kijino, that's what. And the chef ends up just devouring all its onigiri and ends up releasing a monster. Meanwhile, Ki Kijino... Um... Well, okay. So, I like how the story is still being told by Yellow... But we're getting like side stories of the other Well, characters. I do like at the beginning when Yellow goes and visits um, the guy in the prison in the vert in the Jin. jail world. Yeah, Jin. And is like, what the hell is up with that guy? Well, and then we find out visiting hours over and she gets kicked out. But yeah, he gives us the whole life story of Taro. Of he tried to help all these people and he ended up making things worse. So everyone moved away. I I kind of feel um um honey, I kind of feel like this is a real life situation because um you refuse to lie ever. You don't even do like a white lie. Anytime I ask you how I look or what do you think of this, your question your response is, do you want the truth or do you want a lie? Do you want the truth or a lie? <clears throat> so I kind of feel like you are like Taro except for the fact that you don't offer up the lie option. You just, I'm sorry, I know this is going to make me sound like a complete asshole, but I'm just going to tell you exactly what I think. There's nothing wrong with that. As Kijino tells Taro during that, you kind of just have to give people some encouragement even if it's not completely true, because morale helps people move on and become stronger. Just telling them they suck all the time does nothing. Well, then if they don't want to be told they suck all the time, they shouldn't be sucking all the time. But I did like Kijino. Real world experience. He tries to help out. Goes home, is completely in pain. His wife tries to help him. And he's like, oh. And she's like, she she pulls another thing. You do. You love me, right? If you love me, you'll do this for me. <laughs> I swear to God that I get both of these in the same conversation. That's so, true. Uh, oh, very, very true. Maybe a do, little true. Do I do I look in this outfit? Do you want the truth or a lie? Okay. Should I change my outfit to something you like then? Well, you love me, right? It's a no-win situation. I understand Kijino so much more, and I commiserate with him completely. Okay, so anyway, then we... Oh, I'm not done, but no, that's okay. So then we get to, uh, Yellow ends up meeting up with Blue again, and they're all talking, and um, the monster starts attacking, and the guns show up, and they're both like, Oh, you're the other ranger too? I, I did like that, like, oh, we're some, we're one in the same in a way. So then they decide, which is kind of brilliant in a very flawed way, that they're going to try to take down Momoi, Momoi Taro as, as... Because of him attacking them of after him attacking the last them. events. So you see like a mini... And they're at, the, they're at the coffee shop. And basically, she's like, boss. And once again, Black Kaito is like, 
fine with me. I don't know who I like more right now. Megis Tu from Miss Kuroitsu or Black Kaito because one and the same, they're like bosses that I'm like, huh, it would be kind of fun to work for them because one, I'd have a boss who would be so compassionate towards my work needs and focused on keeping me healthy and sane and the other one would be like, the sky's the limit. Do what you gotta do. I don't know how to weigh this. So, but yeah, so they do this little training to try to t beat up Taro. And then the monster attacks, which is a really freaking cool design. Did, I like the skull face in the pyramid. Oh, that 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 is probably my favorite Monster of the Week design from a Sentai show <coughs> in the last several years. Mm -hmm. Because it was really cool looking. Um... But yeah, so they're attacking him, and then we've got our three... Uh, our, our villains, so to speak. Villains, and they're like... and they, they The no-no squad. Well, it's like, are they the villains, though? Because now they reveal that they're supposed to be the ones taking out the monsters of the week. Because they're supposed to be killing off the greedy humans. So it's like, okay, are they actually evil? Or are they just doing their jobs? And if that means they're not the villains, then who are the villains? Well, so, I have come to a conclusion. I'm literally really going to call them the No-No Squad. Okay. Or the So-No Squad, I think they should. So-No. But... So, no, they're not the villains. See? I can make this work. Ah! <laughs> 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 No, stop. <laughs> Sonona, Sonoy, Sonosa. You know, we don't have time for this because we've got food cooking, so. Or Sonona, that's what it is. <coughs> okay, anyway, so they the one jumps off the roof, transforms, comes down, and that's starts Sonoy. us, and then Taro shows up, kicks ass again in his little CGI mech thing, beats him up, he leaves, pissed. They save the day by defeat by healing the dude, and then Yellow and Blue try to attack Taro. He's just like, "Oh, good try!" Boom. I, I was like, "Okay." And then he starts beating up everyone again. He is such a troll. He is literally the biggest troll of the series, because if you think about it. His employees who have to carry around the cart, that have to dance around, they basically have to sit in the wings waiting. And once again, we don't have a mech battle, which was really cool. I know. I actually didn't even think about it until the next episode when we got an episode five and we see the mech battle and I'm like, wait a minute, we didn't have the mech battle. And you're like, well, it had the little mini thing. I don't count that as a substitute for a oh, mech I, battle. I'm just saying that. Oh, I'll take it. I'll take if I don't have to have a mech, a giant mech battle every episode. I'll take it. But I want to know who Inoue had to convince to say we can sell a shit ton of toys still, even if we don't have. Well, a I mech think the battle. problem is that at this point, Sentai is not selling toys, so they're like, "Eh, what's the point of having a mech battle every episode?" Is this gonna be like Car Ranger where? After O-Ranger was not really a flop, but didn't do that well rating-wise. You're going to have... So this Zenkaiger didn't do that well. That Don Brothers is going to be like the best series ever. I wouldn't go that far. But, um, but yeah, so then we have uh, episode, episode 5, which is a very uh, big focus on... On... In, um, Inuki, Inuki. Inuki. Oh, let me pull up. Hold up, dog. So, basically, um, it's for Subasa Inuzaka. Inuzaka. But, okay. Inuzuka. If you've ever seen Lethal Weapon, this episode had so many elements, especially the... Even though it wasn't literally two days to retirement, it's like so close to retirement. 
The only thing missing was a bomb in the toilet. But you have to scrub a toilet. But yeah, so Inazuka is being chased by cops. Gets For a, a crime that he will not say what it is. But he has to take the fall for it but he has for to, one year. Okay, I want to know in what universe outside of a movie universe this would ever happen. But, uh, yeah. This is once again reminding me of the virtual reality. So he's thing. running away from the cops, ends up loop, gets in this place, sees there's no escape routes with his glasses, leaves, but ends up dropping his glasses. Which kind of reminded me of like a car <laughs> ranger thing. And then he ends up meeting up with Yellow. Haruka. Takes, pr goes to take her hostage, and she's like, oh, is he trying to be a, ask me out? Well, my mom, my mom, my uh, boss did say to create a new manga, I have to get more experience. So. Oh my god, I know. Okay, cool. Let's go with this. And at first, <laughs> I think she's like incredibly dumb. But she's conniving because she's like, once she finds out that she's technically a hostage. Well, no, he, after, because Pink comes in there. Oh, Kijun. And he's like, he's a criminal. She's like, wait, does this mean I'm a hostage? <gasps> Even better! You can't get experience like this! Just randomly? And then Kijino is trying to save the day. And Kijino only comes in. Because he had to use the bathroom. Because he had to use the bathroom. So, I'm like, Kijino, once again, I commiserate with you entirely. But, um, it was hilarious because you, once I had Kijino in there, I'm like, are all of the five going to come together? Is this going to be the episode where everybody knows who everybody is? So after Kijino comes in, they're sitting there because, unfortunately, they're at a stalemate. Yellow will not let Black leave. He will not let him, like, run away. She will not let Kijino try to call the police to save the day. So they're at a stalemate. So and then Black pulls up this bread that they all just start eating. And then comes in Taro to get the package for this bread. And it's like, what, what, what? So then Taro comes in. And Taro, well, it gets even worse because Taro acts like he's going to take him to the police. No, he takes him to the customer's house. Both of them have to apologize, um, Inuzaka unwillingly. He, Taro then asks the customer, is there anything you'd like me to do? And she's like, well, and the next thing we see is Inuzaka cleaning the Inazuka. toilet. Inazuka. cleaning the toilet. And he's like, why the hell am I doing this? So that's where I got my true lethal weapon moment from. And then they go back to the warehouse and Pink's like, well, I thought you were going to take him to the cops. Well, and here's the thing that stupefies me. Kijino and Haruka stayed. <laughs> They could have left! Now, Blue was in there when they did the birthday scene, right? Yes, yeah, so okay. basically, because Blue fights the monster earlier in the episode. And... It gets away. It gets away. So Blue sees all these police because... Well, he starts chasing after the monster, trying to find it. Then he sees all the police yelling this thing at the warehouse, Come out! Surrender! And he does, this, does his haiku thing. And then Yellow comes out, and she's like... We need a fast car! He will, or the hostages will get it, because apparently she is now <laughs> the big boss. So Blue then gets pulled, ends up going in there and finding them all together. So like, all oh. five of the rangers are now together. And then, uh, tar then, uh, Black reveals, oh yeah, it's my birthday today, my girlfriend that is... I, is been taken away. He's been hostage. Is a hostage. We usually celebrates it with me and Taro's like, oh. And then... You see a background scene which irks me to know him because some kids are little shits. You see a scene when Taro, it was his birthday, and he was so excited for friends to come, which it was something I always was scared about. That's why I was always happy when I celebrated friends as a kid. When I celebrate my birthday with my family as a kid, because I never thought my friends would come. Okay. Did your friends always come to your birthday? Yeah. Pizza, I, cake? Are you kidding me? I I was always afraid that people didn't like me enough to come Video to my games? birthday. Video games? I never thought people liked me enough. Hey, 
Well, one of my friends brought over his PlayStation and all his games, and that's why I decided that day I'm buying a PlayStation with my birthday money. You're so lucky. Most of my friends were like fair weather friends. I know. I'm pathetic. But but then again, that's why I did drugs, everybody. So look at past episodes of Zen Kaiser if you not want to know what the fuck I'm talking so, about. So, and then... Kiji's like, oh, well, I just happen to have five cakes in this little thing. I know, perfect. So they serve them all cakes. They, they do this little birthday happy celebration. Birthday. And then, oh, the cop goes in there and the monster's The attack. cop that's two days from retirement. <laughs> but they're, he's, they're out there and they just hear this whole happy birthday song. They're like, what the hell is going on in there? Well, okay. To be honest, if I was a police officer waiting out for the hostages and I hear all my hostages singing happy birthday to the criminal, I'd be a little concerned. <laughs> and then it turns out he's the monster and Black and him go far out. But Black does not have his glasses so he can't transform. Until... They magically dance at the Yeah, I don't know why the glasses just... I understand these things would teleport to the people, but why do the glasses not teleport to him until maybe that exact he, point in time? Maybe because he was in danger. But he was in danger from getting caught by the cops. Yes, but he was in danger from the monster. Whatever. Uh, which was a pot ranger monster. And so they defeat... Well, Taro, everyone then comes in there. They do Ryu Soldier, and Yellow <laughs> is like... And this is one time I can't participate because there's no Yellow Ranger in Real Soldier. So then Red comes in. He's like, oh, this is cool. And Takes his sword and hijacks the power of Real Soldier to Defeat use the, the final attack. Then we, have a, then we have the mech battle where Red basically topples a giant Lego building on top of the monster to defeat him. Which I actually thought was hilarious. There was no effort involved. And then, you know, the day is saved. And then we have our trio, the, our Sono trio. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, we have to do something. And they, for some reason, burn the Mona Lisa. No, they freeze Mona Lisa. Well, yeah, freeze Mona Lisa for some reason. And then we have a preview that sh told me absolutely nothing about the next episode. I was like... Did we just have a preview for the next episode? Because I don't feel like I know anything about the next episode. Well, apparently it's a Kijino episode. Okay. I got that because it said King Pheasant for a day. Which, actually, when you say King Pheasant for a day, it made me think of a Metallica song. Because isn't there a Metallica song called, like, King for a Day or something? There's King Nothing. King Nothing. Okay, maybe that's what I was thinking of. But, um, overall, once again, these... These We've had more story in these five episodes than we got in all of Zenkaiser. Honey, we have more story in these episodes than we've gotten from Zenkaiser, Rio Soldier, Lupin versus Pot, Hugh Ranger. Ranger. So. And Juoger. I was gonna say we've had more story here than we've had in the last few series. Except for Kira Major. Well, exactly, excluding Kira Major, which was. Fantabulous. I did like the scene also when we have Inazuka is being chased by these two Yakuza looking dudes and it's just the grunts trying to attack him or something. But they seem very surprised when he had those glasses. Well, I think it's a reminder. We're living in the world of They Live. So, if you have not seen They Live and now Lethal Weapon, you have a homework assignment for awesome movies from the 80s. Because I think Lethal Weapon came out in the 80s, right? Yeah. But, overall, these episodes were awesome. I would recommend, if you have not had a chance to check out Dawn Brothers, definitely take a look at it. Um, I finally figured out why I actually enjoy the opening song, and it's because it actually has music that kind of reminds me of music within Persona, you know, in Shin Megami Tensei Persona. Persona 5. Well, Persona 3, 4, and 5. The music sounds very similar to that for, like, the opening theme songs. Um, but I'm, it's, I'm, it's still worth it. I'm still liking this series. Even with, oh my god, when The Black bad CGI for 
pink oh, and God. so pink and black CGI. <laughs> but I did like for episode four, you actually got to see more of the actual costume. I'm just thinking in episode five when you had Inu brother on the dumpster after transforming. Oh my God. Oh, it looked terrible. That at least okay. That's the one thing. The story has been keeping me distracted from the bad CGI. Well, I also do appreciate that they're taking advantage of transforming into other rangers. So, like, specifically for pink and black, there's enough series that have those colored rangers that they're able to do that, which I think helps save on the bad CGI budget. Now, obviously, these transformations into these other rangers have absolutely nothing to do with the story. But Inoue is at least doing something so we don't have to stare at bad CGI for about 10 to 15 minutes of the episode. But yeah, the uh, it's been all, it's been fun so far. I'm I'm still intrigued by the mysteries of what's actually going on in this world. Um Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things I am liking about it. The character development's been really great. And it's interesting on not having... Because there technically hasn't been a true Red Ranger-focused episode yet. In the no, five episodes. No, it's... Like I said, it's still a... It's still a yellow series. But... Haruka's the main character of the but series. But we've had more focus on all the other Rangers. Red's been more, like, there to get them going... But they've been, it's been a pink focus episode, a black focus episode, a blue focus episode, and yellow focus episodes. Well. Because even with the little bit of Ma, having Ma, uh, Taro be developed with his little childhood, it was still all pretty much a Black Ranger episode. Well, the same thing with episode four. It was a. It was a pink episode. Um. So I. I really appreciate that because. Admittedly, that's the one thing either way. Now, we just finished Hibiki today, so I have many complaints <laughs> about that. But overall, either way is an incredible storyteller. I think Junko could actually learn a lot from either way. Junko could learn a lot from a lot of people. But she could learn a lot from either way because... The one thing he hasn't done yet, which I'm very impressed about, is there's no love triangle. I know we're in episode five, but even by episode five of Jetman, we already had love interests going on. Yeah, but we did have, um, what's her name from Sono... Sononi. Sonona. Sononi. No, the girl. Son Sononi. I thought she was Sonona. No. Okay, well, whatever. We did have her, like, in episode... Three going, uh, like, kind of interested in Taro. But, yeah, so far it's been really great. I am really impressed with the series right now. And granted, it could just be because the bar of Sentai is so low that... I kind of feel like even if the bar for Sentai is so low, so no, um, that the... Don't. Even if you have that low bar, you can still enjoy it. I'm not doing anything. I, I'm gonna, uh, let's see, any last thoughts? I'm trying to think if there's anything else before I go and take the food out of the oven. No, um, go ahead and take out the food, I'll close up. Okay. So please tell us what you think in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Do you want the bread or do you want me to save it? Save it. Do anything else that YouTube asks of you. Sorry, we're eating an extremely late dinner. But if you want to check us out um, outside of our channel here at Kaijin Okami, you can look for us at Kaijin Okami on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, Patreon, Discord, and we also have an awesome website, which admittedly I created at creativitybydesignllc.com. 
And if you want some merch, once again, that I created. So you're the reason that the site doesn't work well on the cell phone. I've been working on that, <laughs> damn it. But yes, if you want to buy any merch, if you want to check out our website, creativitybydesignllc.com. And they're in the comments below. Plus, or you can go to our shop, which is basically after the end of the website, after .com slash shop and look for some of our really cool merch and if you somehow want to follow me i actually created a new twitter handle at toxic toku because apparently people online well especially twitter for tokusatsu are extremely toxic toxic <laughs> so i'm gonna take advantage of it maybe i'll see if i can trend like you do by pissing off everybody the problem is i'm not that good at pissing people off Okay, maybe intentionally. Okay, I can piss people off in person. Very easily. Online, though, for some reason, nobody gets pissed off at boys. You know what? If you want to piss someone off, go go say, Elden Ring doesn't have a pause button. You will have tons of people that will just get downright with personal attacks, derogatory personal attacks, because you said the game doesn't have a pause button. It's quite fun and entertaining. Do people still get upset about that now? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that just seems kind of lame. But whatever. Oh, maybe I'll post that people who play Elden Ring are um, virgins and have never been exposed to anything entertaining. Whatever. Would that piss people off? Probably. But I don't know. But it'd probably be trying too hard. But whatever. See? This is why you can't piss people off online. But anyways. You gotta just make it flow naturally. You gotta say something that feels like you're naturally saying it. And then everyone's gonna get pissed off at it. See, this is why I'm just a bitch in real life. I can't do it online. All right. I didn't have social media until 2000. Time for dinner. So until next time. Bye. bye.